I remember as an undergraduate philosophy major getting into Marxism, Shishak was the main person who would pop up for me to watch. It felt that regardless of what I was watching, somehow Shishak was in the mix. Naturally, I took a liking for this quirky fella who was always introduced as the world's best known Marxist and the most dangerous philosopher in the West. I remember he would reach conclusions I would disagree with, but always kept coming back to here. After all, this man kept citing what seemed to be an infinite amount of names I had yet to engage with in my young philosophical career. He must be really smart, I thought. Let me continue checking in to see if at some point I finally come to understand what he's really about. The more I got to this point, the more ridiculous his self-labeling as a communist seemed to me. In your article, you hint at a somewhat youthful captivation with the sniffling gesture. Can you speak a bit about your initial engagements with Shishek as an undergraduate student? And can you elaborate on the story where the editorial in which you published a translation of a Rancière book made you get an introduction from Shishek? Also, since Shishek is a part of this larger phenomenon you describe as the global theory industry, which includes thinkers like Alain Badiou, whom you studied with. Can you tell us how that went? And in the process, maybe describe what you mean by the global theory industry? Great, that's an expansive question, but a great place to start. So I first encountered Zizek uh, as a young student in the early 90s uh, in the United States when a lot of the dominant discourse was deconstruction, kind of postmodernism, poststructuralism. And Zizek bursts onto the scene being labeled this kind of, you know, Lacanian, Marxist, uh, radical, dangerous thinker, etc. And I shared with you the kind of enthusiasm of a young person who personally, I was generally ignorant of history, political economy, uh, the history of class struggle. I'd been educated after all in the imperial core and therefore I lacked really fundamental reference points about just the nature of the world that I was living in. And there was something sexy and cool and exciting about someone who could talk to someone like me. And I do really think that Zizek pitches to uh, the youth culture in general and is a kind of uh, force for bringing people in at a, at a certain level. But the difficulty with that is that his most profound insights, of which there are very, very few, are all borrowed from the Marxist tradition. And what he does is he mixes those insights in an eclectic kind of homo fashion with non-Marxist and often anti-Marxist discourses and modes of analysis. And what you're left with is a kind of cultural mashup where you still get glimmerings of the Marxist tradition, but they've been commodified. And they've been commodified because of the way in which they've been crushed and subjected to ideological elements from the larger kind of theory and culture industry. And so it did not take very long for me to figure out that Zizek was not someone who had a really robust uh, political and philosophic project that was actually linked to the liberation of the you know, global working class. Uh, he struck me as someone who had a careerist, uh, you know, orientation and an opportunist orientation. And even though I could sense that early on, it became confirmed much later on as I got to know his work better. In the case of the translation that I did, I ended up publishing, I'm sorry, translating a book by Jacques Ranciere, who is an anti-communist anarchist. And uh, I didn't have my politics fully sorted at that point in time and thought that there was something more to Ranciere than there actually is. And I was mainly interested actually in his aesthetic work and some of the history of art stuff that he's done, some of which is solid, but again, suffers from an anti-communism and a lack of materialist analysis. But that's another story. In any case, in the case of uh, Zizek, the only way that I could get a translation published that I had already uh, worked on was by finding someone who had a lot of credibility and symbolic capital within the theory industry who would be willing to preface it. And so, in short, I was given the condition that I could, you know, publish this translation if Zizek wrote the introduction for it. And this itself speaks volumes to the way in which the global theory industry operates and also how we need to understand it. Because at the end of the day, my critique of Zizek is not an ad hominem critique. It's not a critique of an individual person. It's a critique of a system 
that produces someone like Zizek and promotes him as the most important thinker, the most dangerous thinker, etc. And so the fact that I would be basically obliged, if I wanted the translation to come out, to work with someone who is a charlatan and an opportunist really demonstrates how that whole system works. And it just became much worse after I ended up accepting that because he ended up writing the preface basically to a different book than the one that I had translated, but wanted me to go ahead and write, you know, just basically change the title of the book and run it anyway. And so that revealed to me and very close up because I'd been working in Paris at that point in time with Derrida and Badiou and other kind of leading luminaries of French theory. It revealed to me the kind of crass nature of his intellectual production. And I'm not the only one who has had kind of close up stories. Anyone who's kind of in the mix, so to speak, knows that Zizek is uh, not only sloppy, but kind of takes pride in being someone who will, you know, uh, simply not follow up on his, on scholarly rigor in any really serious way whatsoever. And, so anyway, there's there's that aspect to it. But then to come back to your kind of uh, larger question, which I think is really important, is that a lot of this work then addresses the question of the global theory industry. And so the critique that I just put out of Zizek is part of a larger book project, which is tentatively entitled The Intellectual World War on the failed attempt to kill the idea or the very idea of communism. And it looks at the material forces that have been marshaled by the capitalist world in order to denigrate not only actually existing socialism in any manifestation that it takes, but also uh, all of the theoretical work in the Marxist tradition and to replace the historical materialist tradition with a kind of compatible left uh, traditions of thought. And in the case of those like Zizek or Badiou or Hart or Negri or Ranciere, Judith Butler, we could add a lot of people, Ernesto Laclau, Chantal Mouffe, we could, the list goes on and on and on. This is a, a very particular segment of the global theory industry because of course that industry is actually dominated by people like Samuel Huntington and Francis Fukuyama who do the kind of direct bidding of US imperialism. But the role of these particular figures that I just mentioned is that they're radical recuperators. What I mean by that is that they are tasked with and have tasked themselves with producing purportedly radical discourses that call everything into question, the history of Western metaphysics, the existence of man, uh, enlightenment, uh, Europe, European thought in general, all of these grand kind of monolithic things. And they appear to be uh, unorthodox and uh, transgressive and liberatory in various ways. But if you go through the details, as I have, because I studied very closely, not only this tradition, but within this tradition, was trained within this tradition. And unfortunately for a long time, quite honestly, I believed in certain aspects of this tradition. You realize that they are all profoundly anti-communist. Um, there are different versions of this and it takes on different forms, but they're principally against what they refer to as totalitarianism, which is of course a kind of, originally it was a concept that was developed in the communist tradition, but then it was recuperated by the US national security state and uh, intellectual figures like Hannah Arendt in order to discredit actually existing socialism and try to affiliate it with fascism, which is an impossible intellectual task because they're you know, world historical enemies and fought World War II basically uh, around that kind of, or was, constructed around that opposition between fascism on the one hand and, and socialism on the other. And so that critique that I have of, of Zizek is part of a larger critique of the radical recuperators and the function that they play in the global theory industry, which is to recuperate the possibilities of radical critique within the anti-communist camp and the anti-socialist camp. Uh, in other words, what they do is they police the left border of critique. And they also are part of an imperial project, a project of cultural imperialism, because as everyone knows, I, or I presume a lot of people know, who are familiar with intellectual traditions outside of the United States, there's a way in which those who are promoted within the imperial core, within the Euro-American world, become kind of 
uh, sacred values in the larger globalized uh, intellectual world. And so if you're in Argentina or if you're in South Africa or if you're in India and you're an intellectual and you operate in certain circles, it is almost a requirement that you have some familiarity with Foucault or Badiou or you know people of this ilk, Derrida and others, even if you tend to disagree with them for whatever, whatever reason it might be. And that's not the case with the thinkers who have been excluded from this tradition, right? Those who maintain a more historical Marxist, uh, I'm sorry, a historical materialist mode of analysis. So that's another function that they play is they play a really specific role as radical recuperators within the larger system of cultural imperialism. But maybe I'll stop there. I don't know if I got to every aspect of your question, but I'm sure you'll bounce back to me if there's more. <laughs>